upwards of 100 police officers, if not more. She's resisting! Stop resisting! Stop resisting! Tell us why. I'm from Channel 13. I'm live Facebooking right now. Tell us why you're doing this. Doing my job trying to um, inform the public. Justin, wait a minute. Justin Carter, Carter being arrested. Ah, uh, come on. Being arrested. This is a journalist doing his job Justin. out there. They were there trying to do their job to cover this event. My uh, sincere apologies to uh, Carlette Clear and to uh, Justin Carter. A woman comes running out. She's on fire. She crosses Dale Street. It happened right here, the intersection of Gerald Street and Northland Avenue. As you can see, the damage is still evident. You have homeowners insurance. You have flooding insurance, but not a lot of insurance companies provide erosion insurance. This is all happening live right now as we uh, zoom into the Genesee River. Crews working hard. The car uh, believed to be still underwater. Crews working to raise it and retrieve it. And it really hurts when it hits your face. That's the type of snow we're dealing with out here. As a result, this afternoon around noon, I want to pan over to my right here. You'll see a tractor trailer. Right Hollis called 911 nine hours after her murder. They found blood in the walkway of his home as police say he tried to hide her body in the woods. You can see these notices that were posted pretty much condemning um, anybody from being in here. We're told about eight people uh, live in here. They haven't been with heat for a few weeks. The damage is significant. You can just take a look at this trampoline behind me. There's some grass bark sticks around this metal laden uh, trampoline you see here in Ganondi. We also talked to the city of Rochester. They say that they're on a modified schedule. That means more crews will be on hand to assist in everything they need to handle this storm. Police in Brockport are investigating after fake $100 bills were used at six businesses in the village. Well, some Penfield residents breathing a little easier tonight as the town tries to move forward with purchasing an old golf course. Easy does it. Yeah, just stick it up <laughs> Easy does it. Right, you got this. Woo! Oh. You are right there, Justin? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I just did a little swivel. A little swivel, is that what okay. they call it? The famous moon boots that I wear. Um, I heard that they were popular in the 80s. They're from Rochester. What you guys got? Oh, I see you guys are cashing out. Phantom 4, we've got an iMac. We've got a 4K LG TV. I made that. 17-year-old Alejandro <laughs> Ortiz is missing a ventricle in his heart, but by his moves on the basketball court. You'd never know. He goes to high school in New York City now, where he's on standby for a new heart. It's just been a waiting process. We've been there for about eight months now. And An emotional part, eight months for his sister, Evelise. More so when she got back to Rochester from New York City one day and noticed her house was burglarized. So I ran upstairs and I looked and like the ball was gone. This ball, it was a gift to Alejandro from the Make-A-Wish Foundation, signed by the 2013 NBA champions, the Miami Heat. I was, I was very upset. Like, who would want to steal from a, a disabled child? RPD investigator Timothy Gourlay got a call the following day. For a person to have the audacity to, you know, steal a kid that's extremely ill certainly makes you uh, a stronger desire to work even that much harder. One tip led to another, which led to an arrest days later. Police say someone else was hiding the ball while 26-year-old Aaron Peterson tried to sell it. Because of the things that's going on in the community, they look at officers and it's like, uh, police is just bad. It changed the whole perspective on him. For a young man whose only wish was taken away from him. But thanks to a quick thinking investigator, it wasn't for long. His only wish was to have this basketball. It's just, uh, you know, it's a special kind of law. God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, it actually, he actually does. I was glad that he, he got caught in his ways. Peterson was charged with burglary and grand larceny. Ortiz thrilled tonight to have his ball back and now patiently waiting for that new heart. But it was huge. It was big. So talk to me. What, what was it? It was a rat. Mary Ellen Nick says it's been crawling so underneath her deck under since somehow. the fall. But when it got into her house... The cat got it and brought it up to me because they bring it up to me live. Cats help, but not everyone has them. I'm Karen Gibble, owner of the ABC scary? Pest Control and Wildlife, says these last two mild winters have trapped 
a lot of business. 2016, probably 50% more than any other year. So I have been in the business for 20 years. Was the worst fall I've ever seen for mice. Gibble says mild and dry is perfect mating weather for these vermin. And when the temps dip again, you know where they go. Once they find an entry point, yeah, they'll keep coming. Also construction, vacant homes, that all plays a key role in these things moving into other, you know, homes. And for Nix, living behind a set of abandoned train tracks doesn't help her case. And, you know, critters live in there, woodchucks and stuff. Little mice I can catch, they get in your house in the fall. But rats, oh, honey, I didn't want that there. Thank God for the cats. She was not playing around, experts say. Sealing up those small entryways from the outside is your best bet. And if you decide to take the poison route, be patient because it could take some time for those critters to digest it. Jenny.